What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So for those of you wondering if there's any updates on my life, the rat is still in my ceiling and my air conditioner is still broken. So here today I bring you another quick and dirty video. Today I wanted to make a video about products that I feel should get more attention. These might be just specific products. Some of these are gonna be entire brands or entire lineups of products. And in order to respect your time and mine, let's just jump into it. So. First one is gonna be a speaker, the Heco Aurora 300. I reviewed this speaker recently and holy crap guys, this is a speaker that was so impressive to me at its price point. It was such a competent performer. I felt like it punched above its weight. I feel like it did what a speaker should do in the hobby, which is put a smile on your face, not be picky with amplifier pairings or what kind of recorded music you're listening to. It just sounded fantastic no matter what I did. If you're in the market for a budget speaker that's gonna be on the warmer side of neutral, definitely check out the Heco Aurora 300. I was so impressed with it, I reached out to the distributor Audio Advice and I asked if I could review Heco's more expensive model, the Salon Revolution 3. They said yes, so we got a pair of those on the way and we'll have a review out maybe in a couple of months because I do like to spend a good amount of time with speakers. So. Next on this list, this is a top 10 by the way. So next one is gonna be Aurelic Amplifiers. This is a budget company. Um, most of their little amplifiers are like $200 or less. They've got little preamps, built-in streamers, super feature packed. They don't have a ton of power, but for $200 or less for a small room or like a little TV rig or secondary bedroom system, these are awesome amplifiers. Now. Tonally, they're gonna to lean on the cool, open, airy, analytical side of neutral. And I think that's a great sound for budget gear, for them to be like open and airy. I like them a lot. Tons of features, guys. Check them out. They recently came out with a new amplifier. I think it's called the B50. I have one here. I'm gonna review it soon. Really cool thing about that model, it's like under $150 and it has HDMI ARC. My favorite thing about most Aurelic products is how feature packed they are, how affordable they are, and they all have subwoofer outputs. Next, a speaker that I reviewed a couple of months ago, the RSL CG3M. Again, this is another budget product. It's $200 for the pair. Um, it's a small speaker, so look, if you've got a big room, this is probably not gonna be for you, but if you've got a desktop, bedroom, small room, whatever, and you're looking for a budget speaker that is just mostly neutral from top to bottom, the RSL CG3M is gonna be a fantastic option. Now, being tiny, you can't expect it to have tons of bass. It is gonna sound a little bit thin overall, but you pair it with a budget subwoofer like Emotiva's SE8, for example, it's gonna sound amazing. What's next? An amplifier. Um, you know, and by the way, guys, just to be clear, I didn't plan on making this mostly budget stuff. This is just, a, again, this is a top 10 list of products or entire lineups I feel deserve more attention because I think they're very competent, competent performers for the money. Next product is gonna be the Yamaha RS202. Uh, this is a budget amplifier. It sells for under $200. It's a stereo amp. My only gripe is that it doesn't have a subwoofer output, but if you can find a subwoofer that has, you know, a, a high level inputs, you can use the B set of speaker terminals for that. They are spring clip, unfortunately. Yamaha did cut a lot of corners bringing this amplifier to market, but for less than $200, the sound you get is pretty good. It doesn't have a ton of power now. Uh, again, you know, being under $200, we can't expect too much, but the sound is very good. It's gonna lean on the warm side of neutral overall. And it's, you know, it's gonna be kind of like the Hecos where like, it just puts a smile on your face. It's not too picky of recordings or speaker pairings. And now uh, while I like the Heco speakers a lot and the Yamaha RS202 a lot, I wouldn't put them together. The Heco Aurora R, uh, 300 speakers probably gonna pair better with the Aurelic amps that I mentioned earlier or something like an Emotiva TA1. Um, that this Yamaha RS202 amplifier that I'm talking about, it's gonna pair well to budget speakers that are more like open, bright, and airy. Think something like the Polk S15 or Emotiva B1 Plus. Moving on, next product that I think is, 
you know, kind of slept on, went under the radar a little bit, quite a bit more expensive now, the SVS Prime Wireless Pro. Um, this is a powered set of bookshelf speakers. It's an all-in-one, family-friendly friend living room solution. You've got kids, you've got a wife, you want everyone to experience good, decent sound. The SVS Prime Wireless Pro is a fantastic alternative to just shoving a sound bar in your living room because you're lazy or you just didn't think you could have a decent stereo in there. If you're, you got a budget around 800 bucks for decent sound in your living room and you don't want a multi-box solution, you want something that's easy for the kids, easy for the wife, easy for you. You know what I'm saying? The SVS Prime Wireless Pro bookshelf speakers, those really impressed me with how convenient they are. They had the HDMI ARC, so they're easy to connect. They got ethernet inputs and outputs, subwoofer outputs. I mean, a ton of features. You could stream to them, Bluetooth to them. I mean, really easy to use, whether it's, you know, connected to the TV for movie night or just to watch your favorite TV shows because maybe some of you have a hard time hearing that dialogue clarity. I know I struggle with that with a lot of modern content or you just want to listen to music. Super easy, great option. Next on the list, uh, we're going up again in price, is Kinky Studio. Oh no, I've dropped my note cards. Like I said, quick and dirty, so we're not going to cut this video. We're just going to keep going. Guys, I never promised professionalism and I never promised high production quality. Get used to it. Kinky Studio. These are the pre-amplifiers and power amplifiers I run personally. This is their pre-amp. Their monoblock amps are below. You probably can't see them in this frame. Kinky Studio is a uh, amplifier and pre-amplifier company that's based out of China. Um, and they make pretty high-end products. Usually when we think of Chinese amplifiers, we think of budget stuff, Class D stuff. That's not what's going on here. Kinky Studio is bringing high-end products to the market at reasonable prices. It's not cheap. The preamp's well, a little over $2,000. The monoblock pair is around $3,600, $3,700 for the pair. So it's going to be more like Denifrips pricing. And um, it's interesting because Denifrips and Kinky Studio were both distributed through Vinshine Audio. And for some reason, Denifrips has gotten a ton of love and a ton of attention with their amazing digital to analog converters. Um, and their amps and preamps have gotten some good love too. But it does seem like Kinky Studio is ignored a little bit. I like Kinky Studio a lot because of the sound signature. Highly refined, great detail very open, clear, fast, dynamic. If, you know, Focal made a high-end amplifier and they voiced it, I'm guessing it would sound like Kinky Studio. Absolutely fantastic amplifiers and pre-amplifiers. Next on the list, it's not gonna keep going up in price, don't worry, it's gonna go all over the place. Rhythmic subwoofers. I love Rhythmic subwoofers. I think all their subwoofers they make are absolutely fantastic. One downside to this brand is for the most part, they're really only available inside the United States. There are a few other countries you can get them in, but for the most part, they're not really globally distributed. It's a brand that, honestly, until I came along, no one was really talking about, at least on YouTube. You could find a few old forum posts and stuff like that, but I got turned on to them because a, a buddy let me borrow one and I was like, holy crap, this thing is amazing. And I just kept moving up their line, trying a lot of their subwoofers and they are just such absolute competent performers. Whether you want something on, on the smaller side like their L12 or F12, or you're in the market for a bigger sub like a sealed 18, they got a vented 18 too, uh, 15s, etc. Rhythmic subwoofers are just known for their transient response, note to note distinction, and just amazing bass fidelity overall. If you're in the United States, this is a very slept on brand in subwoofers. Oh, another great thing about Rhythmic subs, uh, they don't publish this, and I, I wish they did talk about a little bit of their culture on their website, because I've had some good conversations with the guys over there. One of their beliefs is that any subwoofer with the Rhythmic name on it should be able to have substantial output down to a minimum of 20 hertz. So all rhythmic subwoofers are very competent performers down to at least 20 hertz. Most of them go well below that. Next on the list is the entire Polk Reserve line of speakers. Man, look, th this was a line of speakers that was so good, priced so fairly, and just flew under the radar. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it's like Polk audio and, and, and you know, a lot of us audiophiles are a little bit spoiled and maybe we're not taking them seriously, but guys, listen, 
If you're in the market for a good set of speakers, you like a sound that is on the warmer side of neutral, do not sleep on the Polk Reserve line of speakers. They are absolutely amazing. I bought a pair of R100s myself over a year ago just to review them. I still have not been able to bring myself to get rid of them. They're still here. I, I just, I don't want to sell them because I like them so much. It's a fantastic speaker. It puts a smile on your face. It's not picky with recordings. It's not too picky with amplifier pairings. They're reasonably priced and they look fantastic. Next on the list is going to be the Kef KC62 subwoofer now. This is not a cheap subwoofer by any means. It's $1,500, but it's very special because of how small it is and how low it can extend. If you've got a small room, figure something like 1,500 cubic feet or less, a single Kef KC62 is going to blow your socks off. It's going to get down well below 20 hertz. It's going to play plenty loud enough, all while having very good bass fidelity overall, whether you're listening to music, movies, or playing video games with it. If you can afford it and you're in the market for a small sub, it's one of the best ones out there. I will go ahead and say it's actually the best best one for how small it is. Absolutely amazing subwoofer. It had a lot of hype around it when it was new. I feel like some of that hype's died off and it deserves to have more hype. So I'm reminding you guys the Kef KC62 exists. Don't sleep on it if you're in the market for a small sub. Next one, and this is almost the last one, is the CSS speakers. The one TD specifically, that's the one I reviewed. Now, I don't think this is a brand people sleep on. I think CSS is fairly popular, especially with Jay Z Aggies coming out with his own collab speaker with CSS. But I want to encourage more people to get comfortable with the idea of building a kit, especially if you're on a budget. Because what you get out of the 1TD is phenomenal sound, especially if you've got good amplification. Now that doesn't mean expensive amplification. An affordable amplifier like the Emotiva TA1 will drive those CSS 1TDs absolutely stunningly well, and you'll have an amazing system for about 12, 1300 bucks or less. So that is the 10th and almost final of the list. I told you this was a top 10, but I got one bonus uh, brand for you, Mon Acoustics. Jay Yagi's reviewed this brand and it kind of brought it to light. It's what got me interested in the brand. I got a pair of their Supermon Minis in for review. Lucky for me, the distributor's only about 30 minutes away. I got to meet him at Expo and also we had a fantastic time. Mon Acoustics, they only have two speakers right now. The Supermon Mini, two grand for the pair. And the, um, I think it's just called the Supermon, which is like 25,000 a pair. They're about to release a new speaker that's gonna be in between called the Platamon. That's gonna sit around $6,000. And I know that's not cheap, but keep an eye on this brand because I, I think the, the owner that designs the speakers, he's really onto something. Um, based off of what I've heard, I've been extremely impressed so far with their products. Again, I understand they're not cheap, but for those of you shopping in that price category, you may come to find that Mon Acoustics products in a lot of ways punch above their weight. Anyhow, I digress. That pretty much brings us to the end of this video. And before I let you guys go, tell me, are there other brands that you guys feel are slept on or any products specifically you feel are slept on and need more attention? If so, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. And until next time, later.